My name is Esinam Rosemary Damali. I prefer Esinam a lot of times. I work and live within Accra and Tamale. My basic material for work has been hair, but over time it has revolved to becoming materials that are linked or have histories or connection with hair within Africa or just in Ghana, the space I find myself. For me, a lot of times, um, my practice hasn't had a direct link with my modeling career. But it's more of something I picked up from childhood. For me and her, it has been like I lived in a space where hair was a common thing. Because one, my mother owns a hair salon. So it's typical for a Ghanaian child to pick up materials as such and work with more or so because I, I was female. So my mother expected me to help her usually with her work just as an extra hand. So it became a material I came in contact with very like young and it became something that um, I got used to. So when I had the opportunity to find a material that I understood to a certain point, it was the first thing that came in mind for me. It's more like a personal material. Not just the aesthetics. I'm interested also in the materials that we use in the hair saloons. And more importantly, the techniques that are used in the salon. Because a lot of these techniques are what I employ in my work. It is also important to note that for me, the process of making it contributes to the totality of the work. And I'm interested in the process because for me, the material is flexible and my interest is in the flexibility of a material and the ability for an artist like myself to work with the material and manipulate it to the form that I want without necessarily conforming to the standards of the sun, like you have to make it this length. No, I want to have the opportunity to manipulate the material to a point that I think that's okay. I like it at this point and then it becomes what it is. With regards to the technique, I'm paying attention to a lot of braiding techniques that have evolved within the braiding system or braiding culture. We have um, three stranded braids. We have locally called 3-3, three, three, which is three strands and you weave them together to get a certain extension. There are so many other types, but um, for me, the technique has to come with something that we consider as craft. Working with my mom, it has always been that do it this way because that's how the customer wants it. But coming into art, I realized that, oh, there's the opportunity for me to do it the way I want to, not necessarily doing it to the satisfaction of the customer. So usually when you find my work in an exhibition space, it, it looks familiar. It's something that you've seen, but the form is strange to you. So you are like, why would she use this technique to arrive at this form? It's just me trying to come out of the space that I've always had to do it to look like what a client wants. Talking about flexibility, my interest came out of the synthetic fiber I use for the work. The type of hair a lot of Africans have you can either stretch it, braid it to achieve a form. And I found it to be very interesting. So for me, I translated that material to synthetic fiber, which was something that was across the market for a lot of hair braiders. I'm interested in the flexibility also because it presents itself as a plain material that you can work with. And it presents itself in different colors. So it also gives me the opportunity as an artist who has a background in painting to experiment with some of these colors. Craft is a means to arrive at art. So I do not necessarily have to do away with the craft because if I'm interested in the process of arriving at art, 
myself. If braiding was a technique I had learned from the salon from a younger age, which is known as crafts, how am I able to make this craft translate to the form of art I want to make? For making art and moving from the hand and eye is important because for me, the material becomes a personal thing. So you are able to experience my personality through my work. Unlike the colonial kind of education, you are just producing what you are asked to do. So the presence of the artist is not really felt. The artist doesn't have a connection or thinking process through which they make the work. But in my case of using craft to arrive at art, I am allowed to express myself in the material. So for me as an artist, my material and then the process I go through, as important as it is to me, I have learned to unlearn some things. And for me, from the beginning, of course, it was a paradox to me that I felt that art and craft were two different things and then they represented each other differently. But over my practice, I have come to understand that they are not necessarily two different things for me. Like I said, it's, um, for me, craft is a means to get to art. So for me, they are interdependent. They depend on each other. For my new works, which are the works that are in the exhibition, which involves the cane weaving, they are new and they were more experimental because um, the cane material was something that I found in the saloon space. My relation with the weavers is more cordial and more like work-based, but I'm, I'm looking at the possibilities of learning it, but not learning it so I can make it, but learning it for the purpose of having a fair idea of the techniques that are involved since I'm really interested in techniques that goes into making some of these things we consider crafts. This exhibition was very experimental for me because I haven't worked for some time, so it was like a coming back. More so, it was my first time of working with a wig base. And like I said, I usually want to work with something that is familiar, but move it from the state of being very familiar to something that is strange to you at a certain point. I was looking at the space here, and then also at the skill of my work in relation to the space. More also, I'd wanted to be adventurous a little because a lot of my works from before had focus on making pieces that are miniature, pieces that are more like accessories, like picking from jewelries, like miniatures. That was from my previous works. So it's something like an extension of that, okay, from this size, let's try something else and see. And I think it worked. For this exhibition, I included two new materials, which is the cane, and then the local hair dye, locally known as yombo. My use of these two materials was because I realized that they were moving out of the system, like they were becoming things that people didn't use anymore. But I think that they are materials that have some history that we need to maintain. And I think that was the reason for which I chose that. For me, the hair dye represented a generation of people that believed in natural hair dye. They represent some texture and some materiality with a lot of materials. So an example is like with a sculpture that is in the middle of the center. When you go close to the sculpture piece, you see that the dye represents itself in a different way on the material at different points. Not because I intentionally didn't apply it so much to a certain place, no, that was not the reason. I used it as a paint material, so I used it like you use your acrylic, like you use your um, watercolor or 
any other thing, just with a brush. But the process of application, just like how you use your brush, because that's how I've seen them apply the local hair dye. And it presents some kind of material and texture that we hardly find. And I thought that it would be a very interesting character for my work to have. That's why I used them.